we are getting sicker, not healthier. And I think Mr. Trevor on the NCD side, you know, this is, this is a continuing issue that we face in Barbados. And I was lucky enough this week to have an opportunity to work with the primary school kids at, at Holy Innocent School. Uh, a little skit they did on Edu Drama, uh, Amanda Kambach and, and the team. Ministry of Health has started a program to educate the youngsters in Barbados on what is uh, better eating habits, what are better eating habits, and healthier living uh, lifestyles. But it must start at that age. We, when you heard the teachers there tell you what the kids eat and what they bring to school, it is worrying. Um, and the, the lack of knowledge that they have themselves and what the impact of what they're eating can do to them. And so I, I encourage you to encourage the young children to try and take up the, the healthy eating habits. They learn from us, as we all know. Um, many of us are suffering from the consequences of not eating or exercising, eating healthily or exercising regularly. And these NCDs are, are common throughout Barbados and are common throughout the region, um, Trinidad, EEC as well. I think Jamaica probably has a, a, a lower rate than we do. Obviously they have a much more physical lifestyle and physical activity uh, than we do in most of the other countries. Better eating habits probably too. Stress obviously is another factor that we have seen. We have seen an increase in stress related illnesses in our claims. And I think the medical profession here can, can also confirm that. But the work life balance has been an issue in Barbados in the last few years. The stress, the economic stress, uh, spendable income stress. Stress is a killer and we, and we have seen the impact of that in a lot of our claims as well. These are, these are some, of the, um, some of the data we have in, in Sajikor. As I said, we have about um, just over 40,000 in Barbados, 40,000 people on our planet. 45 room in that region. And this sort of age band here shows you where the data lies. Surprisingly enough, on the NCD claims, when you can get 16% of your claims being uh, applicable to people under 19, that is an extremely worrying sign, folks. And I don't know if the Barbados Registry has all this data, but that's a very, very worrying sign. You may ask, you say, well, it looks like so it's getting better. It went from 21 to 16 in five years. But let me say, that may be the result of an aging workforce, children getting older, we not bringing on more new people into the workforce, so there's, there are less young children coming under the plants. So the, 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 as the children get older, they drop out the plants. Um, so that is not necessarily a trend of healthier living. Um, that, is a, that is caused by a trend of less young people on the plant. Um, so you're getting less uh, percentage of claims at that age group. But 38% average claims of our claims um, are due to NCDs. Uh, on, on, the, on the the life side, the, the death pains ratio is, is probably double that caused by NCDs. Um, but this is a very worrying trend, and we have to do something about it. You can see from 2009 to 2013, people at 40 years, it has gone up from 33% to 40%. That, that, that's a huge increase in, in health claims uh, for NC, due to NCDs at that age group. So it, it, there is a, we have a problem going from 73% of people over 40 to 86% of people over 40 in five years. And that's best based on Sajikar's data. So let, let's look at it. Most of our people are, are white collar employees. Most of our members, they're white collar employees, their spouses and their children. Uh, we, do have, we do have manual workers in our, on our plants, yes. But most of these are people who you would say are either high school or university educated that should know better. You either deal with what are the cost drivers or the premium is going to be too little to cover your, uh, your, your uh, health claims. And if the premiums are too little to cover the health claims, the insurance company loses money. Next year, your premium has to be increased. Either has to be increased or your benefit limits are cut or reduced or your deductible is increased. It is a common, you, may, you have to have a return 
from an insurance company perspective, we are not a charity, we are not the QEH, <laughs> and we are not the government. But we have to make a return for our shareholders. Unfortunately, health insurance does not make anywhere near the return that we should make. We, it is an extremely work-intensive business. It is not like selling life insurance, where <laughs> hopefully you usually only got one claim to make on that. Um, and it is a, it's an ongoing business, a customer relationship. So a client, a member, um, provider, insurance company relationship, that, that sort of triangle. So it's a lot of work, very work intensive. So, but when you, when you don't a, a address what drives the cost of the, of the health, um, the health claims, you, you have a problem going forward. Unfortunately in Barbados, many, many people don't want to address this issue. Many of our clients come to us, whether it is through their brokers, through their sales advisors, or themselves that have direct business. I can't afford a, a, an increase. Okay, Mr. X, well, let's look at increasing your deductible, employee's deductible. No, 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 we can't do that because the union will get upset. Or no, 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 the people can't afford that. Okay, well, let's look at reducing the benefits. No, but, but you can't reduce the benefits. The people will get upset. So what do you do? Somebody has to give. The insurance company has to survive. You've got to make a return on your investment. And if you don't do it on a gradual basis, if you don't do it based on your trends and your historic data and your, your analysis of the, of the portfolio, insurance becomes unprofitable, business suffers, and at some time, insurance will decide to fall away. What you are seeing internationally is that many entities have gone to the stage where they cannot continue to afford the increase in the premiums. Um, they have they, a lot of them internationally have done a lot of things to, to reduce the cost to themselves by increasing the sharing of the premium between themselves and the employees. Um, but in, at this time in Barbados with economic hardships and in the region on a whole, that is a challenge. And so people don't want to address that issue. They don't want to put more of the, the, the cost of the, of the premium on the employee. But the time will come that if they don't do that, if employers don't decide to either increase the deductibles, reduce the benefits, or share more of the premium with the employees, they will not be able to afford it because companies are under pressure. And once companies can't afford it, you know what's going to happen? Folks, with effect from 2015, we are no longer in offering any new employees the health, health plan. Or we are, we are discontinuing our health plan. And then, Minister, and QEH, and Dr. Chase, the government system is again under pressure, more pressure, unless another provider, somebody steps in, a benevolent type person. I don't think we've got too many of them that would do that at this stage. Cost shifting. Well, my friends from the medical profession here, some of them left, but um, cost shifting. Cost shifting is a, is a way of taking from Peter to pay Paul and then Paul to pay for all. Because if you decide that a Clark company, he got surgical insurance, he has surgical insurance, he could afford to pay me $2,000 for this procedure. But Jane Doe coming in, poor lady, she doesn't have any insurance, but so you only get charged with $750 for this procedure. Because I can tell you now, I'm not afraid to say it, some of the doctors in here and in Barbados knows the surgical insurance policies better than anybody in Barbados, better than some of our employees. We could call some of the doctors and ask them something and they could tell us the answer before we could ask some of my employees sometimes. Because the doctors learn the policies. Cost shifting. I'm not accusing doctors of doing something they shouldn't be doing. But really and truly, if, if you can't say that one procedure costs $1,000 for one person, the same procedure costs Another thing, because the person has insurance and the insurance company can't afford to pay the claim. It's not right. And that, that sort of thing really needs to be looked at. It's not right. I don't do that. 